But out of our tears, we must take actions. Mr. Speaker, 2024 was a tough year. A tough start for our businesses with the January 10 lootings. A tough time for political stability. Weaponizing our vote of no confidence provisions. Underpinned by a confused and divided opposition. That culminated, that culminated in a lottery or seven bomb cars. Picking six or seven candidates for alternative prime minister when we all knew, when we all knew the end game would always be the other guy. A 28,357 million budget, 980 million kina, larger than the 2024 budget of 27,377 million kina. Mr. Speaker, let me be more specific. When you go to your supermarket, supermarket checkout from 1st of July 2025, assuming if our GST monitoring system uh, is up and running, on rice, no more GST. On chicken, no more GST. On tin meat, no more GST. On tin fish, no more GST. On tea and coffee, biscuits, noodles, flour, cooking oil, no more GST. On women's sanitary products, an essential health item for our women. No more GST. On soap, baby diapers for you. No more GST. Honourable Members, I wish to announce that I have received the following messages from His Excellency the Governor General dated 29 November 2024. A. A message recommending the expenditure of public monies of Papua New Guinea in accordance with Section 210 of the Constitution. Minister for Treasury. Mr. Speaker, today I introduce the 2025 budget, the sixth annual budget, or if we include five supplementary budgets, our 11th budget presented to this House. A 28,357 million budget, 980 million kina, larger than the 2024 budget of 27,377 million kina. Revenues will total 25,408 million kina, 2,014 million more than the 2024 budget of 23,394 million kina. And because revenues are growing much faster than expenditures, the budget deficit reduces by another 1,035 million kina in 2025, down to 2,949 million kina. Our budget deficit has fallen from 8.9% of GDP back in 2020 down to just 2.2% of GDP in 2025. Only one quarter the level in just five years. Our debt sustainability continues to improve with the debt to GDP ratio dropping down to 47.4% in 2025. No matter what the opposition claims, this is genuine budget repair. Built on the back of hard, responsible, responsive, caring work by the Marape Rosso government. Keeping on the path to a surplus by 2027 and the option 
for the next parliament to start repaying all of our debts by 2034. 2024 in retrospect or looking back. Mr. Speaker, 2024 was a tough year. A tough start for our businesses with the January 10 lootings. A tough time for political stability. Weaponizing our vote of no confidence provisions. Underpinned by a confused and divided opposition. That culminated, that culminated in a lottery or seven bomb casts. Picking six or seven candidates for alternative prime minister when we all knew, when we all knew the end game would always be the other guy. and a tough time for law and order in our country. The 22 deaths in our 10th of January, January riots, massacres in Wapanamanda and East Sipic, the Mulitaka landslide where several hundred died as reported by the United Nations. Our unacceptably high levels of domestic violence our sorcery killings. These realities of 2024 bring great sadness to my heart. The stories of deadly tribal fighting and other violence makes me weep. It makes our country weep. But out of our tears, we must take actions. Securing Papua New Guinea through our police Defence Force and Judiciary. Mr. Speaker, the 2025 budget is based on the theme of securing PNG in 2025 and beyond. The centrepiece for this year's budget is the police budget. Mr. Speaker, we had a headline in the national newspaper on the weekend stating, and I quote, Police asked for 700 million kina. The good news, the 2025 budget gives the police more than they have asked for. We will give them a 19% increase in wages. So they are able to grow the force to 10,000 by 2030. We have increased their goods and services budget to 158.6 million kina, an extraordinary increase of 67% in just one year. Enough monies to fund fuel for their vehicles, stationary to prepare court cases, and support for special operations. The capital budget is 200 million kina, as they requested. Police will be given top priority in other areas of cross-agency funding, such as retirement funding. This is a good budget for our police. We want our police forces to understand from this budget that the Marape Rosso government stands alongside you and your vital work. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, backing up the police forces in times of crises can be our defense force. In this security-focused budget, we have increased their wages budget by 15%. We have increased, increased their goods and services budget by an, an extraordinary 32%, and the capital budget by an even more extraordinary 100% and 16 percent. We are also standing beside our Defence Force as they undertake yours and my vital work in providing security to our country. Security requires much more than the work of our police and Defence Force. If someone is arrested, 
we need a well-funded judiciary to help ensure accusations of crimes come quickly before the courts. We want justice delivered swiftly, leading to resolving tensions. Operational funding for the judiciary has been increased by 25%. Securing PNG with a focus on grobs on growth and jobs. Growth and jobs. Mr. Speaker, securing PNG must extend beyond physical security. We want to address the underlying causes by lifting living standards and creating jobs through strong economic growth. Mr. Speaker, I must first provide two cautious reflections before discussing some good news. First, I know that on average our people have lower standards of living than in 2012. From 2012, our people were driven down a deep economic hole. Living standards had dropped by 11% on average by 2018. We are now climbing out of this deep hole and it will take much more than just six years. The positive economic news in this budget says we are only halfway back out of this deep hole. This is the real price of bad economic management. We know our people are doing it tough, absolutely. We must all continue to work even harder. They are still worse off than they were in 2012. Even with record growth rates, it will take until 2029 to climb out of the hole we inherited. And simply back to where we started in 2012. Of course, of course, our people are feeling the pain of still being in this economic hole, and we all must help. But at least we know that we are now better off than we would have been if we stayed with the other guy. With a declining economy, with falling jobs, we need an opposition that holds government to account. Absolutely. But if you just focus on the glass half empty, continue with your hell-bent talking down of our economy, failing to provide a balanced discussion to include our many, many positive developments, you are helping stir social discontent. We must be responsible and accurate in the way we talk and present in Information. We must be mindful of our shared responsibility as leaders so that we all contribute positively to nation building. A strong economy helps build economic security. Mr. Speaker, with those two cautious reflections, let me now spell out some facts. Let me focus on PNG's real economic growth rate in the non-resource economy. This is just 72% of our economy that most affects our people. Real growth, so excluding inflation, of 4.2% in 2021, 5.9% in 2022, 4.7% in 2023, 4.5% in 2024, and 5.2% projected for next year. This is the first time in our history we have ever had five years in a row of real growth in the non-resource economy of over 4% a year. This is what is helping get us out of this economic hole. And with Papua LNG and other major resource projects, heading towards final investment decisions in 2025, there is an expected 
upside to this already historically high growth performance. Our overall economy, including the resource sector and including price increases, is expected to grow from 124 billion in 2024 to 137 billion in 2025. We are well on target to meet the Prime Minister's objective of reaching a 200 billion economy by 2030, and a 300 billion economy by 2035, and a 1 trillion economy by 2048. Securing PNG through assisting families with cost of living pressures. Mr. Speaker, as I mentioned earlier, while these are very encouraging figures for economic growth, the Marape Rosso government understands why households are experiencing tough times, especially on food prices. Food prices are 50% higher than they were 10 years ago. Today, let me announce that the 2025 budget builds on the historic household assistance support packages of 1,637 million kina over the last three years. In 2025, we will continue with the school project subsidies that benefits an estimated 2.3 million students around our country. We will continue the 20,000 tax-free threshold with up to an extra 63 kina per fortnight in pay packets. We will lift the stamp duty exemption threshold for first home buyers from 500,000 to 700,000 kina. We will freeze the biannual indexation of excise on tobacco products and alcohol. We will also deliver on our promises to reduce GST on key household goods. The IRC says that new GST monitoring systems will allow for no GST to be charged when buying essential goods from a target date, a target date of 1st of July 2025. The initial plan is for this measure to extend through to 30th of June 2026. And we will consider extending it further as part of the 2026 budget. Mr. Speaker, let me be more specific. When you go to your supermarket, supermarket checkout from 1st of July 2025, assuming if our GST monitoring system uh, is up and running. On rice, no more GST. On chicken, no more GST. On tin meat, no more GST. On tin fish, no more GST. On tea and coffee, biscuits, noodles, flour, cooking oil, no more GST. On women's sanitary products, an essential health item for our women. No more GST. On soap, baby diapers for you. No more GST. In total, in total, another 685 million in support to our struggling families and households. Over the four years since the Ukraine-Russian war led to surging international prices, we are delivering 2,322 million kina to households. Doing more than any other government in our history to help Papua New Guineans and to deal with inflation and the rising cost of food. The Marape Rosso government is a caring government. Securing PNG through capital investments. Mr. Speaker, the 2025 Public Investment Program 
will once again invest record levels into building the infrastructure essential to securing our children's future. A PIP budget of 7,617 million kina. A PIP budget that is 273% larger than the miserable 2,041 million invested by the former government in 2018. These infrastructure investments are changing lives. We've all seen the videos of joy as these roads boldly go where no roads have gone before. There are many facts to confirm these impacts in terms of kilometers of new roads or better maintained roads or rural bridges. Let me take a personal example. We have just completed a road from the New Island Coastal Highway up to the Lelet Plateau. Our women farmers can now more easily get their vegetables down to the markets in the Matnai, in Kavia, including the Lear Gold Mine. This is transforming lives, creating jobs and lifting incomes. The Marape Rosa government is the infrastructure government. Securing PNG through essential services. Mr. Speaker, we want quality education and better quality health care. We are securing PNG with massive investments in education of 4,435 million kina, a 12% increase. We are also securing Papua New Guinea with massive investments in health of 2,768 million kina, a 9.4% increase. In conclusion, securing Papua New Guinea in 2025 and beyond. Mr. Speaker, we have shed too many tears due to violence. This is not what our forefathers dreamt of as we enter our 50th independence anniversary year. This budget marks a turning point, a real focus on building the security necessary for creating the future our children deserve. Standing by our police and defense forces with record levels of support, record levels of funding for the judiciary, to our health workers, for our teachers, Securing Papua New Guinea with a 2,322 million kina household assistance package, including removing GST at the supermarket checkout on 13 essential items. Securing our country through record levels of targeted infrastructure investment. Securing PNG with historic levels of economic growth. And securing our country with continued implementation of our budget repair plan that remains on track to deliver a budget surplus by 2027 and we, when we can start paying down our debt. This budget provides the framework for starting to make life better for our people in the next 50 years. This framework must now be converted by all in this house, by all of our public servants and ultimately by all of our people into practical implementation. For our 50th anniversary, let us all commit to do better, to meet the aspirations of our people. The 2024 budget is a very good starting point. Mr. Speaker, I commend the 2025 budget to the Parliament. Thank you.